Well, hi there. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if you're watching this video, you probably have a working circulatory system. You need this circulatory system to transport gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide, as well as nutrients all around your body from where you have them in abundance to where they're needed. Because as great as it is that the cells in your lungs have free access to oxygen, that doesn't save your brain cells from dying if you can't get that oxygen to them. Well, this is a flatworm. It doesn't have lungs. So does it have gills? Nope. It doesn't have a respiratory system at all. And this is largely because it doesn't have a circulatory system either. If you think about it, lungs are just a structure with a lot of surface area that gets air very close to blood so that gases can be exchanged between them by diffusion. Gills are basically the same thing, except they get water very close to blood so that gases can be exchanged between them by diffusion. Well, what if you don't have any blood, like an insect, or you don't have a circulatory system, like the flatworm? That's right, insects don't have blood, but they do have a circulatory system, so uh, what do they circulate? Hemolymph. And while the hemolymph of insects transports many nutrients, it does not transport oxygen or CO2. They do not have lungs, for without a circulatory system that transports oxygen and CO2, you can't have lungs. Instead, air is transported directly to their cells through a system of tubes called a tracheal system. And this works pretty well, as long as the tubes don't need to go too far. You may have noticed that insects, even the largest in history, were not that large. And that they were bigger at times in Earth's history when oxygen concentrations were higher and the tracheal system didn't need to be quite so efficient. Now you know why that's the case. But that isn't what flatworms do. They have no blood, no hemolymph, no circulatory system at all, and no tracheal system either. So how do they keep their cells alive? By keeping their cells close, close to nutrients and close to air or water. You may remember from our video about why a mouse will bounce but a horse will splash that smaller objects have more surface area relative to their volume than do larger objects. Well, by being very small, organisms like plethodontid salamanders and tiny flatworms can have a lot of surface area on their skins for gas exchange to occur without having gills or lungs. The salamanders have a circulatory system, just no lungs, so their skin is essentially their lung. Because they are small, there's enough surface area to their skin to supply their small volume with the oxygen it needs to survive. But the flatworm does not have a circulatory system. This means that the skin cannot act as a lung. Instead, all of the cells in the animal must be close enough to the surface to get oxygen directly through diffusion. This means that the animal needs to be either very small or, you guessed it, flat. And so flatworms that aren't extremely tiny are extremely flat. And that solves their oxygen problem. But, but what about food? Well, flatworms do eat. They have a mouth. And if you remember from our video about your disturbing similarity to bagels, they generally don't have an anus. So count your lucky stars that your mouth doesn't have to do double duty. In you, food enters at the far end of your anus, also known as your mouth, and exits out of your anus without ever really entering your body, per se. Nutrients are absorbed into your circulatory system and are thereby distributed to where they need to go. Well, flatworms don't have a circulatory system like you, plethodontid salamanders, or insects, so what do they do? Well, it turns out that the gut of the flatworm works a bit like the tracheal system of the insect, but instead of delivering air to each cell, it delivers food directly to each individual cell. It fingers out throughout the entire body. Now, I should mention that in very long flatworms, this can mean that the food gets very far away from the mouth and that it would be difficult to get it back to the mouth for double duty. So they do have an anus. In fact, as if just to make up for all the flatworms that are sans anus, they often have multiple anuses. So while you should be thankful that you have an anus, 
Aren't you glad that you don't have more than one? And now you know. If you learned something today, please like this video. If you'd like to learn more in the future, please subscribe and click the little bell. And we hope to see you real soon.